All right, so uh, let's just take a uh, quick tour through the uh, textbook chapter. This is definitely one of the chapters I want you to uh, go through. I think it's very comprehensive. It's uh, one of the better textbook chapters out there, I think, on pelvic fractures, uh, written by uh, two uh, experts, no doubt. Um, and um, I'll just kind of go through the cases. I'm not going to go through too much of the text um, uh, and really go through it really quickly. Um, so um, obviously inspection, physical exam is real important to make sure that you don't miss something like a morel lavier lesion, like a perineal tear or something that could be an open injury. This kind of nicely shows some of the standard radiographs you need to get. Um, the... Um, uh, you know, a couple of the uh, injury patterns that you can see, APC versus vertical shear. Uh, this here shows sort of your, you know, your, uh, at least the dentist classification for uh, sacral fractures, which is not the only one, but one you should be aware of. Uh, this kind of just shows some examples of unstable uh, pelvic fractures fixed with, uh, with X-fixes, uh, or addressed at least initially with X-fixed, and um, um, unfortunately, uh, you know, some cases of, uh, you know, malreduction just due to inadequate fixation. Um, now, keep in mind that, you know, it, if these are not treated well, you, you can really end up with a lot of deformity in the patient with substantial limb length discrepancy and, uh, uh, you know, disability because of this. So, um, you know, early on patients can die from hemorrhage. Later on, they can have a lot of chronic issues if not treated well. So, uh, you know, this section in, on X-Fix really goes very thoroughly into everything you need to know about pelvic X-Fix pins, where you place them, supraacetabulum, crest pins, uh, sort of some tips and techniques to, to make sure you can, you, you know, you do a nice job. You don't miss the pelvis, for instance. Um, keep in mind, when you place these pins, it's not just like straight down or straight across. There's an angle you got to put them in to make sure they stay in. And if you want to be conscientious, you, know, you can check imaging to make sure you stay within the tables. Um, the um, super acetabular pins, you got to make sure that you stay out of the joint. These you cannot just put in, in the ER or something like that. These got to be done under fluoro. You can go through the um, greater sciatic notch. You can go through the hip joint. You know, you can, um, you, you need imaging to guide these. And here's a nice example of a couple of retractors in showing a nice placement uh, with that um, obturator. Uh, oftentimes we get like an obturator outlet view to see that uh, um, that sort of uh, teardrop over the acetabulum. And then you get your iliac view to show that you're not going into the uh, greater sciatic notch and you're heading towards that uh, PSIS. And a lot of demanding C-arm images needed to get these pins to go in right. Anterior ORIF, um, relatively straightforward, like a fan and steel type approach. Be aware of the corona mortis. Talked about this in the first uh, pelvic uh, lecture slides, you know, between the inferior epigastric or the external iliac system and the obturator system. It's a retropubic anastomosis. Um, some techniques for anterior fixation. I showed you the one thing in the last set of slides with the two screws and the uh, Farabooth clamp or Jungbluth clamp. Just sh this this one shows just a simple pointed reduction forcep. Trying to pull this together. Here's the example I showed in the slides with the the um, the Jungbluth clamp steering and pulling this together. Um, you know you want it to look pretty. You want the screws to you know you want the plate to sort of sit in the right spot in between. So. A lot of times you may actually have to sort of get the plate in position, get the reduction, and actually put a couple of K wires just to make sure your plate's not like too asymmetric and it's sitting where you need it to. Um, crossing the screws can sometimes improve your stability and prevent loosening um, of the uh, of the plate. You know, there was a time when these were done actually in a dynamic fashion to allow some loosening, but we've kind of gone away from that. Um, and this just showed some like retrograde extra articular uh, remus screws in addition to the uh, the, the posterior um, transiliac trans uh, transiliac screws transsacral screws I should say from from 
posterior ilium to posterior ilium. Um, here's an example of um, a reduction of the anterior SI joint through, uh, like I said in the last slide, uh, set of slides uh, through the ilioinguinal approach, or the lateral window of the ilioinguinal approach to get to there. And here you can see one screw on either side and then fixation uh, anteriorly to sort of close down this vertical shear type injury pattern. Skeletal traction um, can be used uh, down here. You can see there's actually a frame that's attached to the table. Um, so, you know, you kind of get a point of fixation on the table and then you sort of get the reduction and then that locks it on. If the patient doesn't slide, then that should, you know, be another adjunctive uh, technique you can use. Uh, here you can see sheets, taping of the ankles and knees. I showed this in the, in the PowerPoint slides uh, in order to um, not lose your reduction. Um, you can use a distractor. So instead of having, you know, X-fix pins, let's say you're plating the symphysis and you need some adjunctive reduction. Pen, pen, distractor, it's temporary. You take it off when you're done after you've plated the um, symphysis. In this case, you can see, you know, some pens uh, you know, in the, uh, you know, heading towards the PSIS. Maybe they didn't make it all the way there. Um, but you can see uh, there's just some, you know, mild widening here, but uh, reasonable uh, reduction. Um, and you can see an improved reduction um, after it's, uh, you know, really close down in, in the compression mode. Um, uh, unfortunately, sometimes if, uh, if you're not careful, you can get these uh, sort of persistent uh, uh, malreductions. So don't be afraid to get CT scans sometimes postoperatively if you're not sure intraoperatively. Um, let's go through a couple more things. So um, this shows the anterior SI joint reduction, showed that previously. Um, keep in mind when you do fix these, and this is maybe not so important at the resident level, but um, when you do this reduction technique, you can get inferior widening and lead to a little bit of non-anatomic reduction. So you can see that here and represented in that model. Nicely done uh, to, to, to show that, and you will see that occasionally. Um, Iliosacral screw technique, there are some points you need to know here, even if you're not going to be doing them, it comes up on exams, you need to know your anatomy, uh, you need to understand there's uh, something called the, um, uh, a, um, a, um, a uh, iliac cortical density, sorry, uh, that you need to stay in front of when you are placing these uh, iliosacral screws. So you need to get a couple of views. You need to get a nice outlet view, uh, a nice inlet view, and you need to get this, this uh, lateral sacral view. And the lateral sacral view is going to show you um, not only your anterior and posterior border, but it's, there's this uh, um, iliac cortical density that you need to stay below. A lot of times on your imaging, you can sort of um, check a um, inlet, check an outlet, decide where your trajectory is, and get a sense of where roughly your uh, iliosacral screw is going to go in. It's not always perfect, but it gets you in the ballpark. Um, one point, I'm going to go back a couple of slides. Keep in mind, again, the L5 nerve root drapes over the anterior part of the S1 body, and it is particularly subject, here you can see it nicely here, particularly subject to injury with anterior perforation uh, of the S1 body when you place the screws in. Um, so this is kind of shown here to some degree. So here you can see um, uh, that uh, iliac cortical density here uh, that you need to stay underneath when you place these screws. Um, here you can see the neurovascular structures. You know, if you're if you're fixing iliosac, I'm sorry, sacral fractures, which are vertical, um, often usually you put a screw straight across. If you're fixing the SI joint dislocation, the um, uh, you know the obliquity is like this, so you usually go perpendicular by aiming um, anteriorly a little bit. So slightly different trajectory based on what you're doing, what you're trying to treat. Sacral dysmorphism. Uh, it is worth mentioning. Basically, it's when you have like a lumberized S1 or sacralized L5, and you can get a little bit confused, especially with a lumberized S1. 
the uh, frame the S1 framing tends to be very very big. You tend to have less uh, room uh, here um, anteriorly, and you're more likely to get the L5 nerve root. So sometimes you have to um, just scrap doing SI screws and do something like a transiliac plate or something like that if you have dysmorphism that uh, you can't account for, um, you know, with percutaneous techniques. Um, you know, S2 is an option. You can place screws in S2 if you have enough uh, safe bony corridor. Um, and I think for uh, your guys' purposes, most of the stuff, uh, you know, at least towards the end of this chapter, um, are interesting, but um, maybe not as critical. However, a couple of points. Do make sure that you really you know, go back to the beginning of the chapter, understand what are the safe places to place these X-fix pins and that you're really careful. You know, I like just drilling the outer cortex and then letting the pin find its way by hand. You certainly don't want to have something that looks like this um, or looks like this and you can be fooled intraoperatively. Remember, you're not drilling straight down. You're, you're drilling at a bit of an angle. It's a little bit different for everybody. Usually, it's almost about 45 degrees down this way and that's when the pelvis is reduced. When the pelvis is not reduced, it can be even more confusing. So I think that's probably good for now. All right, and that's the end of the chapter. So um, hopefully that helps you, and um, we'll uh, hopefully review some of these topics in conference.